we're very blessed uh, to have now available therapies that can prolong both progression-free and overall survival. Traditionally, we've called those maintenance medications, and more recently, the concept is of continuous therapy. Whichever you want to use, um, we now know that it is critical not only to achieve a response in myeloma, but to use a maintenance strategy or a continuous strategy in order to prolong progression-free and, in many cases, overall survival. Now, in the past, thalidomide was used as a maintenance uh, medication and did actually confer benefit in terms of prolonging the response. Unfortunately, as is well known, thalidomide has as a side effect, even at low doses, the development of neuropathy. Fortunately, lenalidomide uh, does not have that attendant neuropathy, and studies have shown in non-transplant candidates and post-transplant in the transplanted patients that lenalidomide versus no maintenance confers in most studies a progression-free and an overall survival advantage. So lenalidomide is the most common uh, maintenance therapy at the present time. In the non-transplant patients, lenalidomide dexamethasone given in a continuous fashion, in other words, maintained therapy, has been shown in the first trial to uh, prolong both progression-free and overall survival uh, compared to lenalidomide and dexamethasone for a fixed period. So whether it be the uh, non-transplant candidates uh, or the transplant candidates, maintenance is essential. Now how we modify maintenance depends on the risk of the myeloma. Standard risk multiple myeloma defined by genetics fish studies, uh, for example, hyperdiploid myeloma, would be maintained with lenalidomide alone. High-risk multiple myeloma, for example, with the 17P deletion detected on fish studies, would have the incorporation of a proteasome inhibitor into maintenance. Proteasome inhibitors alone, Velcade in particular, from the Hovon trial in the Netherlands has been shown to prolong progression-free and overall survival post-transplant. Most recently, we now have the availability of an oral proteasome inhibitor, exazomib, and that offers the opportunity to have an oral maintenance that incorporates proteasome inhibitors. But the concept is really important achieve the maximal response, but then continued therapy can prolong progression-free and overall survival. In all likelihood, what is happening is that's preventing the underlying uh, genomic evolution and the evolution, therefore, of high-risk disease. So maintenance therapy is essential. The final point is that these therapies are well tolerated. So lenalidomide given for prolonged periods of time uh, can be well tolerated. I have myself, the very first patient ever been put on lenalidomide. He's now in his 15th year of lenalidomide treatment. When thinking of maintenance, one concept is tolerability. The other one is long-term side effects. And there has been uh, concern over secondary malignancies in the context of lenalidomide uh, maintenance. That is a minor concern in patients who have had melphalan previously, either low dose in the non-transplant patients or high dose in the transplant patients. Nonetheless, the benefit is overwhelmingly in favor of using maintenance. If you do not incorporate melphalan into the treatment and then use lenalidomide maintenance, there is no increased risk of secondary malignancies. So it's a new world. We can use novel agents as maintenance therapies, and they're very effective.